Pleasure to be here with you tonight. Um, maybe a round of applause for all our presenters. We've heard some great engaging stuff tonight, right? Thanks, Marketing TO, as well, for the opportunity. Um, my name is Martin Hussar, and I lead digital transformation for Allergan. I've titled my presentation tonight, The Cutting Edge. And I'd like to remind everyone that the cutting edge can very often be the bleeding edge. And at the same time, this gives me a very good reason to use an Iron Man visual in a slide deck, which I've been aching to do for a long time. For fans out there, this is uh, Iron Man, Tony Stark, in his bleeding edge armor, cutting things up. And the bleeding edge armor is a cutting edge technology that I think many of us would like to have to save the world. But when we talk about pharma technology, or any technology for business for that matter, we must understand that it goes far beyond the technology itself and involves people and processes and implementation. Implementation, good implementation, often implies having experience deploying whatever it is we're deploying before. So you can easily see when we're deploying new cutting edge technology that no one's used before and deploying it with people who have never used it before in ways that have not been done before, the opportunity to not get things right is pretty large. So today, what I'd like to share with you are three tech trends in pharma that I believe are at a level of maturity to do more cutting than bleeding. The first one I'd like to look at is something called process mining. So if you take a typical organization that's trying to get something done every day, it usually starts with someone in the organization interacting with systems, interacting with other people and stakeholders, who are interacting with other systems, and all of these interactions, or bureaucracy, come together and hopefully lead to the completion of a task. In any organization, there are hundreds of these cycles going on every day. And at the end of the day, we hope that the organization has delivered value, right? But managing this can be a challenge, especially if you can't see what's going on, right? So this is where I stumbled across an innovative company in Germany that has a technology and what they do is they take the log files of all these systems that people are interacting with and they layer them on top of each other. And by layering them on top of each other, they're able to create a view of what is going on. It's quite brilliant, actually. And, um, uh, you know, this, this uh, is very, very similar to uh, web analytics for websites, those of you that are familiar with it. So you kind of have the Google Analytics of what's going on in your organization without actually even speaking to anybody. The potential for an individual organization here, I believe, is great. You know, looking at the processes of an organization, whether they be commercial, operational, supply chain, uh, there's great opportunity to, to, to leverage there. But I think the real opportunity lies in using this technology in distributed delivery systems, like our Canadian healthcare system, that go across different organizations and different stakeholders. If everybody could collaborate, pump all of their data into this system, we might be able to look and see and solve for different operational problems within the healthcare system as we know it today. So really great stuff. Um, the next trend that I'd like to talk about is content webification. So another today trend where content webification is about transforming all offline content into dynamic interactive websites. Marketing content today, most of marketing content today, is offline. And the reality is that PowerPoint presentations and PDFs really don't do very much. They're not interactive. Um, they're difficult to update. And they're not consumed easily on our favorite screens of choice today, which are mobile. Sorry about the feedback. I don't know what I'm doing here. This is uh, bothering everybody's ears. Can you, come this way? you want me to come this way? Yeah. Okay. All right. Is that better? Okay. All right. Um, so, content webification is about transforming all of this offline content into interactive, dynamic websites. So practically speaking, imagine enabling a sales representative to create a proposal, a personalized proposal for a customer that they can deliver and leave with the customer after the call is done. And I know of at least one technology company that's an offshoot of Salesforce that currently offers a solution today. 
Um, what's happening here basically is, you know, we've taken marketing, which is all about creating content that's dynamic, engaging, that's persuasive, and that sells, and uh, we're able to do this by transforming it into an asset that does that. Um, webified content is future ready, it's multi-use, being able to be used for presentations and as a leave behind. You know, traditionally in pharma, we have detail aids that we've got all excited about, we put onto iPads, and then when the rep leaves the office, the doctor has nothing to consult when, uh, when they're on their own time. In this way, there's something to leave behind for the physician that actually provides some sort of value with useful information and maybe some interactive features like ways to reach out directly to resources, medical resources, educational resources, or the rep themselves. The last trend that I'd like to talk about is the one of data governance. Um, any Netflix fans in the audience? How many people have seen The Great Hack on Netflix, right? That film that documents Cambridge Analytica and the whistleblowers, right? Good movie. Um, Brittany Kaiser, one of the whistleblowers here, uh, quoted um, a quote that The Economist published in 2017, which claimed that data has surpassed oil as the world's most valuable asset. So think about that. If data is now the most valuable asset, there are a lot of questions that we have to begin asking ourselves. Questions like what data is worth harnessing? What data is worth being collected, queried, and analyzed? And why would I invest to do all of this? Quite frankly, I think pharma has, uh, as an industry, maybe missed the boat on a large portion of this because if there's any industry that should know the most about doctors, I think it should be pharma. But through years and years of working and perhaps not collecting data, that allows us to generate these insights, you know, we're behind the eight ball in that regards. Um, so, if data is the most valuable asset, I propose that moving forward, trust is an organization's most valuable currency. And that brings an overarching question that we should be asking as organizations, is how do we establish this and how do we grow this, right? Um, you think about it, who owns data in an organization? Right? It's very easy to fall into the trap. Oh, it's IT. It's our databases. Oh, it's maybe the marketing team. Is it operations? Is it legal? Is it compliance? Well, if data is an asset, I don't think it's owned by any one of these single entities. It's owned by the organization as a whole, and the organization as a whole has to manage its data. And this means establishing some governance about data, recognizing its value, and ensuring that data and trust make its way to the C-suite. So, those are the three trends I wanted to share with you today. I hope you found it interesting, and I guess I'll open the floor for questions. So, I'm gonna ask the first question. I'm gonna ask the first question. So, we originally called this, um, this com session conference, whatever this is tonight, um, a post-Theranos. So, it's post-Theranos, what's happening, and obviously post-Cambridge Analytica, what is happening. So, both of those moments, um, and the idea that once you give your data away, you don't own it anymore, and kind of, you know, what, what's, so how, you know, you've gone from CPG, you know, where kind of, you know, data was your friend, <laughs> you used data to do everything, you retargeted, you did, you know, and now you're in pharma where there's a much different, you know, to your point about trust. How, how do you think about innovation within that? Like, how do you, how do you stop yourself from, I think a lot of the conversations around saying no and stopping and looking at legal and, you know, because the possibilities are incredible. Where are you, as you transform this company, Allergan, to move from a legacy company to a, a data company or a digital company? How are you, what are you thinking about some of those issues? Wow, um, that's a tough question, right? Um, innovation as a whole. I think my approach to it, personal approach to it, is a creative one, and it needs to be based in creativity. Um, and creativity means having an open mind, starting with a blank slate, and just trying things out, throwing things up on the wall and seeing what sticks, right? Acting on those things, and you know, not acting on, on, on things that don't. So, uh, in looking forward, one thing that I always try to do uh, is start with that blank slate, and look at who and what value we're trying to bring, whether that's value to our customers, value to patients uh, across the board, uh, and really use that as the, as the litmus test. 
Um, then, you know, obviously we heard a question before, you know, uh, how do you make money? Well, we are a business as well, and I don't think we can ignore that. So that layer has to be, you know, considered as well. And then once you come up with some proof of concepts uh, for whatever it is that you're doing, you know, then you can start looking at what your barriers are. But I mean, if you start looking at barriers from the beginning, you're never going to get anywhere. that good. I think uh, I'll speak personally from my perspective. Um, I have an interesting view and I don't think I have a complete answer here but Data privacy, we hear a lot of work and, and noise about it being our data. Um, I'd like to challenge that notion because when you go swimming in a lake and you make waves, the waves aren't yours, right? They're the lakes and everybody else that's in the lake. So when we go out there and do things and generate data by what we're doing, I think we need to be aware that that's, that that's taking place. You know, there, there's a movement, again, going back to the great hack, uh, where people are talking about it being our data on Facebook. Well, I'm sorry, if you've signed up to Facebook and you're using that platform, right, you've, sorry, you, you, you've agreed to use that, you've agreed to step into the space and, and make waves, right? So uh, that's a personal view on, on data moving forward, and I think it comes down to the education of each and every one of us, uh, you know, here.